Oh, sorry. Hey, Giant fans. Welcome to the Giant Insider Podcast. My name is Jerry Foley. I'm the senior editor of the Giant Insider newspaper. And with me, as always, is the beat writer in the heart of Giants Nation. Nobody gets the biz. Chris Bizignano. Chris, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to one of our followers. We always talk about how great our followers are, the listeners are. Uh, Craig, his Twitter handle, or X handle, I should say, is at H-O-E-F underscore C. Craig reached out to us, um, said his father was in the hospital. His father's actually a Vikings fan, but he's a Giants fan. So his father grew up in Minnesota, supported the local oh, team. I was going to say, how the, how the hell is he a Viking fan? Go ahead. He's from yeah, Minnesota, he gotcha. S- supported the local team, but encouraged his son to root for the Giants. So very good father, nonetheless. Very smart father. Right. Um, but he was in the hospital, you know, going through some things. But now he's home and recovering and doing well. We just wanted to give a shout out to him and thank him for leading Craig down the right path and for honestly being a good father. And in all seriousness, uh, Tom, uh, we hope you're doing well, bud. Yes, that's good to hear, Jerry. Glad he's doing well. Yeah. And uh Viking fan. Well, he grew up in Minnesota, so I get it. But yeah. allowed his son, right? To um, that's a good jump on right Big there. Blue bandwagon, yep. right? So and, and I hate to say it, but four Super Bowls that the Vikings have not. Yeah. He said he thanks he thanks him every day for for being a, for pushing him towards the Giants. So yeah. The last Jerry, was it the last time the Vikings were in the Super Bowl was Shit. I guess when Jack Tatum laid out freaking white in 1976, right? Yeah, yeah, it was uh they were in it a lot in the 70s. They had good teams, but could never win that one. Yeah, what did Jim Marshall say? We we were in there every time we went, we lost worse each time. <laughs> the yeah. closest one, I think, was the first one, the Chiefs one. Yeah. So yeah, then they lost to the Steelers in a tough one. And of course the Raiders kind of whipped up on them in 76. So yeah, no, they haven't been in a long time. A lot of good teams. Yeah. I remember the 98 team was 15 and one and they lose in a championship game, you know? So, uh, oh, and, and, Garrett, I, and Gary Anderson hadn't missed all year. Right. And he misses <laughs> that field goal. Incredible. You know? So oh then they lose that one day, uh, the saints a couple years ago and whatever it might have been. So but, uh, crazy. A lot of stuff. So, yeah. So I'm glad he's doing well. It's great to hear. Yeah. Um, and, uh, that's always good. You know, right. So yeah, man, good stuff. All right, dude. Free agency rolls along. Um, couple other, I guess, folks in to visit, Tredavious White. Um, I don't know if you have any insight there or, or your thoughts on him. Um, you know, we can we can kick it off wherever you want, Chris. We can talk yeah. about the visit. We can talk about who we, you know, who else we've signed. Yeah. Uh, so, well, uh, the Giants met with J.J. McCarthy, right? Had dinner with him. That's right. Trey White from the Bills coming in the end of the week. Bills are going to let him walk, it looks like. Um, hey, look, Tredavious White's a good player, but – Jerry's coming off two serious injuries. You yeah. know, he's not a he's not a spring chicken either. He's, he had the ACL a couple of years ago. He had the Achilles last year. Um, so how long is it going to take for him to round back? You know, so but obviously the Buffalo connection here, they'll bring him in, see where where he's at. Good player when he's healthy. Um, but obviously the concern there is the injuries, right? Right. Um who else you just mentioned? Oh, yeah, some other visits. You know, look, Shane's at pro days now. You know, Caleb Williams, all that stuff, and that's um, just that's just what they call due diligence. I mean, he's not getting past the Bears, so right. So, uh, I'm shocked that Jerry, uh, you know, Donnie mm-hmm. Holmes, a guy I thought would not oh. be back this year, S- stunned, resigns. Yep, another one year deal, and, uh, and Jerry, you know, I have to believe that his special teams work. Is the reason why he's back? Yeah, I mean, you you said that toward you said that towards the end of the season that it wouldn't be surprising if he came back and that he was one of the better special teams players. Look, he was a very good gunner, uh, really. You know, and I, I have to be honest with you. You know, he didn't. You know, he lost his playing time. You know, to guys like Flott and all that stuff. Uh, didn't have one start last year. Didn't have one start. 
first time in his four year career, he didn't have one start. And but Jerry, you know, seeing him in the locker room and stuff, the guy never checked out. Man, he never checked out, never sulked. You know, he was right. always ready to go. Right. Obviously, he did play snaps in the slot and all that stuff. Had two interceptions, you know. Um, and then he goes to special teams and he pretty much excelled at it, man. He was a good special teams player. And yeah. I think two things, Jay. One, he didn't check out when he lost basically, you know, lost a lot of playing time to younger guys. Uh, always had a good eye. He's a very good locker room guy. Well, I was going to ask you that because you're in the locker room. Again, I want to stress that. You're in the locker room. Like, you did you notice that he was kind of just going about his business the whole time or what? No, like I said, you know, never changed, Jerry. Never changed. Um, yeah. Like and a good lock, like I was just saying a second ago, good locker room guy, well liked by his teammates. And Jerry talking to him about special teams. I remember talking about special teams, you know, during the end. He was he loved it, man. You know, he took great pride in being a good special teams player. And and look, when you were really when you're a good special teams player, you know, you're gonna make a roster, man. Yeah. And yeah. just thought, I, I think the Giants coaches and Shane, obviously, saw his attitude, you know, yeah. a guy that just came to work every day. And look, he's not a tomato, right? I mean, he's a guy, right. you know, uh, you know, is he a starting slot guy? No, no, we don't really want to see him as a star. But he's a nice depth guy, nice guy if he has to play. He'll go in there and play. You know, he's a good tackle in space, not a good cover guy, very bad <laughs> technique-wise at times, a lot of flags. You know, we've seen that over the years. But- some some, some non-flags too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Exactly. It's the Washington game. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, you know, and then there's, you know, and then called out a little niche for himself with that special teams, man. You know, yeah. and him and Nick McLeod out of nowhere last year. Yeah. Come out at Gunners and, and played well. And, uh, you know, coaches see that. Hey, I'm sure they got him back the minimum one year, whatever it might be, 1.4, 1.2, or maybe right. 700 plus, whatever it might be, and 800 plus. Um, and here he is, back as a giant for another season. So I'm happy for him. I actually like Donnie, you know, so I'm happy for him, man. You know, and he, give me a good special teams player, Jerry. You know what? And if a kid is, could just play special teams and be very good at it, all right. I well, see it, bro. I see uh, the reason. I really do. I'll say this, too. Somebody else was signed, re-signed for, for a special teams play, and I didn't think he was going to get re-signed, and you yeah. said he's going to. It's Carter Coughlin. Yeah, yeah, look. At his exit meeting, you know, he kind of put something on Twitter that, you know, like he basically was saying goodbye, you yeah, know, later. Right. So I thought he, I was, I was a little surprised that it seemed like the Giants basically, Shane and Dable told him, you know, you're going to test the market, see what happens. Otherwise, you might not be back here. But no, it doesn't sign anywhere else. And he's back here. And I'm glad he's another good special teams guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt Pert. Uh, yeah, go figure. Right. Someone Jeff signed Pick. him. Yeah, he goes yeah. on. He moves on, right? So yeah. I think it was Denver signed him. Denver, yeah. Um. So and I'm trying to think of some other guys, but it, real, real quick, Chris, this is the first I've ever seen this. Love from Antarctica, John. If that's true, I mean, that's unbelievable. I mean, if you're in Antarctica, somehow watching, I, I don't even know. Like, is there electricity there? I have no idea. Wow! <laughs> wow. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah. unreal. That's Sorry. unbelievable. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's unbelievable. So. So, Jerry, you know, uh, so as, look, free agency, you might see us a signing here and there, right? Guys yeah. coming in like trade wide. We'll see what happens. But basically, it's wrapping up. You know, it's basically yes. wrapping up. Pro days are going on and all that stuff. So, you know, as free agency um, wraps up and basically <coughs> not over, but, you know, as you can see, the, the finish line is, cl- you know, near. Um, what is, you know, what is some, anything surprise you the way they attack this free agency if, as far as, Wow, well, I'm surprised about this, or, or this was a positive, or whatever it might be. Well, I, I mean, it's not a I, – I think the biggest surprise, the easy one, was the trade for Burns. Now, you said there were rumblings about it, but I, to me, that just absolutely came out of nowhere. Like, I was like, wait, we're going we're gonna to get Brian Burns. He saw the news come out. Um, I mean, outside of Burns, I mean, they're, they're going after, you know, quality. I think quality guys on the line and guys that are always healthy. I love that. Um, I think they attacked it the way I thought they would. The only, I'd say the only surprise was really Burns. Like I didn't expect them to go get a, a receiver. Like they need a one, right? They don't need another two or three. So they're not going to get like, okay, the McKenzie was just like a, let's see what he's got kind of, I think let's see what he's got kind of a move. So I wasn't expecting them to get a receiver. I guess I was a little support, surprised at Drew Locke too. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not mad about it. It's more like a pleasant surprise. It's like, okay, we have another option here. You know, he played pretty well for the Seahawks last year. So he's a quality backup. You know, he's not a Mike Glennon, right? It's not Tyron Taylor, <laughs> but it's not Mike Glennon either. Mm. So I, I think Burns, I think Locke, but like what they did on the line, not really surprising to me. I, I mm. you know, the, the guys they got, they, they, you know, they, um, the versatile, right? Especially the the right tackle. I, I'm not going to say his name right, but um, Illuminor. <laughs> Illumin okay, cool. Illuminor. Like I just, I think that's the right move because especially if he's a backup plan for Evan Neal. Um, so nothing else really shocked me, Chris. No. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you something. Look, we kind of figured they'd be aggressive with the offensive line, right? Try to yeah. bring some. They did. They bring in Aaron Stinney. They bring in Johnny Runyon Jr. Uh, you know, and they bring in Jermaine Ill Illuminor. So. We figured they would be aggressive, spending yeah. and they did. Whether or not they, it's an upgrade, we'll find out next September, right? Yep. During the season. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, Jerry. One little surprise, though, um, mm -hmm. that they didn't bring in a veteran safety or a veteran cornerback. And I, you know, I know Jalen Mills, but dude, I don't think Jalen Mills is a lot to make this 53. And okay. Chris, no, sorry, not to be a, not to be immature, but he better dye his hair something other than green. But go ahead. Yes. Right. Yeah. He's, he's going to have to change that up for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I thought the Giants would go out and bring a veteran safety in by now. I did, you know, right. but they haven't. They might still. You know, there's a couple of guys still out there. Uh, or, and even a corner, you look at them right now and it's like, okay, well, you know, they're going to bring in Trey White next week and all that stuff. We'll see what happens. But even if Trey White, Tredavious yeah. White, signs, Jerry, it's, it's argument sake he signs. I'm still not looking at him because he's still recovering. I don't know how long he's going to take to be back. You know, and it always takes like around a year with that eight months, with nine months, depends on the guy. So I'm still not looking at him like, okay, we got White and we got Banks. No, I, you know, I think that's the position they're going to attack in the draft. Yeah. You know, um, and I'm just surprised they haven't brought in a veteran safety yet. You know, um, uh, that's the that's the surprises for me. Obviously, addressing the offensive line. Look, we know Shane likes to trade, right? He, he, you know. And, and so bringing in an edge guy was a pleasant surprise, not a pleasant surprise, I guess. Yeah. But not a shocker because Shane's aggressive, right? We've yeah. I, yeah. I guess the, the trade itself was just, I was, I didn't see it. And then that huge contract. I was like, wow. Okay. We're doing this good. I thought it was yeah. great, but yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing. I just thought Jerry, they would bring in a veteran safety by now and sign a guy in here next to uh, Pinnock and all that stuff. But there's still time left in the free agency game. Still some guys out there. Um, but in the draft, I would expect what you look at. Well, we'll see what's going on with the quarterback. It's going to be wide receiver corner back too. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, one that's what you're looking at one surprise tweet that I saw today, and I'll get off this in a second. But Darius Slayton's numbers compared to Jerry Judy's numbers last year. Jerry, Darius Slayton's are better, and I just yeah. think it's funny because everybody kept asking, "Are you going to? What about Judy? Any interest? Any interest?" And I think you were like, "No, no interest." And you mm -hmm. look at the numbers like yards per catch, receptions, yards, mm -hmm. touchdowns, everything was better for uh for Darius Slayton. So I just I thought that was that was a surprise tweet that I saw today. But as far as yeah, free agency. Now that was I didn't know about safety, man. I I, I think again I, I want to see what Dane Belton you're I know <laughs> you're gonna see Yeah, him. like I, I I like him and and we'll see what happens. But you bring up a, a good point about um actually before I do that, let me ask let me bring this one up from our friends at Big Blue UK and Ireland podcast. Uh Chris, how big of a how big of a loss to the locker room is Hattie, meaning uh, Jihad Ward. Yeah, well, he was good with the young guys, man. He he liked to guard the young guys, so he'll be missed in yeah. that regard. You know, he was always very good with the rookies, the second year guys. You know, guide them what to, how to be a professional, what to look for. You know, even stuff off the field, what what to look for. You know, don't get in this group. I know that for a fact. He was very good like that, so he'll be missed like that. You know, but yeah. uh, wasn't a guy they were going to bring back. You know, obviously. So oh, your he, boy I think too. If I can sign them. And there's Javarius also your boy. Owens. There's also your boy. Your boy at uh. I liked at, him uh, last year. <laughs> yeah, Javarius yeah. Owens. That's right. You so, did. You know, look, I keep I keep forgetting about him. By the way, because he didn't play much last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was inactive. You know, most of the whole season. Um, but look, we'll find out, right? If they, you know, if they don't sign a guy, you know, and they're going to go out and one of the draft picks, or they're going to go in what they have, you know, which would surprise me. I got to be honest with you. I still think they're going to bring somebody in or draft somebody in the middle rounds. Um, but we'll see. So you you bring up a good point with cornerback early in the draft, right? And the way I look at this is, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but if somehow they get their quarterback in round one, Chris, I almost think it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to take a wide receiver in round two. 
Mm. Now, now maybe someone else falls and they, you know, or the, the it's not there, but I just think there's a, like a, a 90% chance they go stud receiver round two, cause it's a deep receiver class. But if they go receiver round one, look, I, they're going to eventually take a quarterback, but I think everything else is kind of on the table, right? I just think like if, if someone, if they can't move up and get an, a quarterback thing, and I don't know if they're thinking this, but say they like Penix, Knicks, whoever, and they can't move up and they're not there, then everything else is kind of on the table. It's going to be best player available after that, I think. And corner could be one of them. That's just how I see it. I'm not sure if that's how it's going to play out, but I just see like if they go quarterback round one, it's like, wow, there's going to be a really good chance they got to give that kid a number one receiver round two because it's deep. But if mm. they go receiver one, then it could be if they can't get a quarterback, then it's going to be, all right, I think it's going to be best player available. I don't know. Yeah, kind of you know, that's, that's the beauty of this draft, you know. Yeah. Um, Jerry, look, uh, speaking of that, uh, you know, obviously the hot name is J.J. McCarthy, right? How do you grade him out? You got people saying six is a reach. You got other people saying the Vikings are going to move up and take him. You, might you got people saying he might be the third pick. Yep. You know, so I think, you know, talking, looking at J.J. McCarthy, um, look, he did not have to carry his Michigan team, but – he also made a lot of big throws when they needed him. Right. He also made a lot of big runs when they needed him. Yeah. All right. So you have to look at that. And I you look, I, I gotta be honest with you, Jerry. You know, it all depends how they how these guys grade these kids out. Okay. One team might say, no, McCarthy's a later round pick, second round pick, uh, a late middle round, late round, all that stuff. Another team might say, Oh no, you know what? He's better than Drake May. Right. He's better than Jane Dan. Oh, he's right up there with Jane. Top three, right? I mean, yeah. that's what you're hearing the buzz around, right? Yeah. So, Jerry, looking at J.J. McCarthy, if the Giants at the sixth pick draft him, mm -hmm. and the Giants go J.J. McCarthy, okay? Now, back in 2019 when Daniel got drafted sixth, everybody was like, what? Uh, are you effing kidding me? Remember, it was like, Yes, I Who do. the hell had this kid sixth <laughs> overall, right? Right. Basically, we were right. all surprised by it. We no. talked about it for weeks on the podcast. Please right. don't do it. Right. Right. No, J.J. McCarthy is not going to be in that category. Now, no. there's going to be opinions about, oh, that's way too high for him. Right. There's going to be opinions saying, oh, yeah, no, he's a sixth grade. He, he should be graded out sixth overall. You know, he couldn't even went higher. So I, I got to be honest with you, you know, come April 25th, if the Giants decide to go with McCarthy, it's I'm not going to sit there in shock. I'm not no. going to sit there and go, what are you effing kidding me? I'm sorry. You know what I mean? He's not in that category of Daniel. Well, everybody was like, when in 2019, when everybody was like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? You know, and basically the whole league had, what are the Giants doing? You know, no. That's really a stretch. Chris, Chris You're not going to see the that with McCarthy. The laughter at the draft. I'll never forget the sound of the laughter of the media and everyone when he yeah. was taken. Right. You were there. Right. Oh, my God. Right. So, Jerry, you might have people saying, oh, I don't know. The Giants reached a little bit here and there. But you're going to have also a lot of other people saying, oh, right, good pick. Yeah. This is not, a, you know, this is not going to be a kid, Jerry, that me and you, after, if we hear his name mentioned at six, right, are going to say, are you effing kidding me? No way, not at all. No way, no, no way. You might not agree with it, whatever. But this is—he is not in that category of wow, what a reach. Right. There's scouts now, and there's people that cover this—you know—names around this league that, like you just said, they think he might go three. Yeah, right. right. He, absolutely. He. I think. I don't know if he's going to get past the Patriots. To be honest with you, I think Drake may, for whatever reason. And again, guys. I don't agree with the rising and falling like stocks with these quarterbacks, but for whatever reason, Drake May seems to be get falling out of favor. He might be the pick at six. I think the Patriots are going to go with J.J. McCarthy at three. Jerry, it all depends how these teams grade these kids out. Yep. And I know I know, I know it's a time of year where everybody asks, what do you think? Uh, the Giants, McCall, I, guys, I, I don't know how they grade these kids out. Right. You know? Um, it, it, like Shane might have them graded out sixth overall, third or whatever the hell it might be. Another team, Vikings might have him that high. And then another team like, no, he's a middle round to late round pick. It all depends how they grade them out. Right. Okay. But like I'm saying, you know, yeah, I mean, that's something Kevin McWalters just talked about. Vikings could jump to five. Yeah. Right? Yep. 
for McCarthy. Sure. Well, that's yep. all part of the look. This is all going to have to be part of the smoke screen by Shane too. If they're not yeah. thinking about McCarthy at six, well, you make it appear that you are. Right. 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 <laughs> at six. So the point being, Jerry, that JJ McCarthy is not in that category of, oh my God, you're no. effing reach. Are you out of your mind? That like no Daniel way. was in 19. I I couldn't no. agree more. Couldn't agree more. We were talking about it for weeks with Jones when and we were like, look, if you're gonna take him. Maybe you take him with that second pick, but do not take him at six. You had Josh Allen sitting there and a lot of great players at six, and we didn't take him, Josh Allen, the, the edge rusher. Um, and when they took him at six, like I said, I, I can't overstate it. The, the laughter from the media, the fans, everyone, it was like the joke's on us. And it was just, you. I think the, the, the clip of the kid in the stands at the draft party asking his dad, why, dad, what, what, what happened? And the father's going, oh my God, what do we do? Because the kid, little kid didn't understand. I mean, it was universal. Like, why did we take this kid, Daniel Jones, a, another Duke quarterback, a turnover machine sometimes? And yeah, it's not going to be like that with J.J. McCarthy. Oh. Guys, guys, we're going to take a break for one minute. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Giant Insider Podcast. Hang on. And we're back. Folks, listen to the Giant Insider Podcast with Jerry Philly and Chris Nobody beats the biz, busy now. But yeah, Chris, you're right. It's it's not going to be a nuclear reaction at all. It might be some people who disagree with it, well, but it's, it's not going to be the same thing. Yeah, yeah not going to be the same thing. It's no. not going to be even near the same thing. No. You know, um, I have to ask you this too, Jerry. You know, if the Vikings wanted to move up with you and you could get their 11 and 23rd. Yes. <laughs> yes, you yeah. know the question I'm going to ask or yes, you give me the answer. I do it. I you do it. trade back. No, I, I, quality picks, absolutely. Yes. I okay. Hang on. Let me let me let me think about. It. Let me rephrase this. If the fifth pick just happened, and there's three quarterbacks that went, and the and that fourth quarterback is there, I'm I'm putting my faith in Dable and and Shane here to say, all right, we're not going to take JJ McCarthy or Drake May, whoever it is. We're just not going to take. I, I don't think it's going to be Drake May. JJ McCarthy. We're not going to take him. Um, so I would move. I would move back a, a le- to and, and get eleven and twenty three because you can get two really quality players there. I would move back. Is it me, Jerry? Too is like you're not really hearing much about Drake May lately, right? It just not at all. I don't know what's well, happening. I don't know what happened. It seems to be Caleb, uh, Jaden Daniels, and now JJ. Now JJ McCarthy for whatever reason. For yep. some reason, you're not really hearing a lot about Drake May, right? Yeah, and, and it seems like Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, he went to North Carolina. I get it, but like, I just hear that a lot. Like, I don't know, man. He Drake May was number two all year long until the end when Jaden Daniels kind of overtook him for whatever reason, right? Yeah. And maybe you like him, but that's fine. But Drake May to me was the, the the second best quarterback all year long, and now it's he's an almost not an afterthought, but it seems like McCarthy's jumped him. He just seems to be the hot name, man. A lot of people seem to be really liking him. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Giants look that they like shame is at Caleb Williams pro day. They had McCarthy in, went out to eat with him, got to know him more. I mean, this is all this is what you have to do, right? Yeah, you have to do your diligence, brother. You know, yeah. like Caleb Williams, a lot of people, I think some people ask today, like, what the hell are they seeing him for? USC, you know, uh, they're not, you know, he's not going to be there. Well, there's, there's other besides Caleb, there's other kids at USC, one and two, right. you have to get the intel about him. Because right. of two reasons, Jerry, two reasons. One, you never know what the hell's going to happen in a draft. You right. never know, right. even though it pretty much it seems to be determined, right? Yeah. And two, you kind of want that data on him for what What if three years down the road, he's on a trade block or, or whatever it might be, right? And it goes yeah. out of favor in Chicago. Yeah. And you and you go back to, you say, well, we had this, 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 you know, so you always like to look at stuff like that. You can't just say, well, he's going to be a bear, so I'm not going to USC Pro Day. No, that's not the way it works. These guys visit all these kids, you know what I mean? So they yeah. want to see all these guys, you know? So I, that, you know, so he was there. Today. Caleb put on a pretty good show today. I saw him throwing some bombs. You know, I know it's shorts, whatever the hell. Nobody's covering anybody, but still. Oh, know, but that was a bomb, dude. That yeah, was an know, absolute, what a yeah. hose. You don't look too much into this, uh, you know, pro day stuff. You want to get to know the kid. You want to meet with them again and, and yeah. see him throw around a little bit and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, 
But he he threw a he threw a seventy yard pass in the air pretty effortlessly. It was like, yeah. oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Look, if there's one kid, and I said this, Joe. You know, I yeah. said this during yeah. the year. There's one kid who reminds me of Mahomes a little bit. Yeah. It's definitely Caleb Williams. Yeah. Now the other stuff is mental makeup, all that stuff. Well, that's to be determined. Um, and all that stuff we'll see um, about him. A, a lot of people kind of like, what's up with this kid? Yo, he's this and that. But you know, the kid's a talented kid, man. Yeah. You know, he did a lot of great things at Oklahoma and USC, man. So uh, he's going to be the quarterback taking Justin Fields. Yeah. You know, um, traded obviously to the Steelers and all that stuff. So, and all that. So, yeah, look, all about NYG here says you take that number one. And, and, and I stay, gotta, stay, he's saying stay at six. Yeah. And I got to be honest with you, Jerry, I'm with him there. Yeah. Only reason, Jerry. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying, Jerry, you're wrong. I'm just saying me, my, my opinion. Is that, dude, we haven't had that number one receiver since Odell. Right. And in my opinion, mm-hmm. there's three kids that I would be shocked if they don't have a very good NFL careers. Yeah. Very good NFL careers. And obviously, that's Marvin Harrison Jr., mm-hmm. Roman Dunze, and Billy Neighbors. Davis. Yeah. I looked at them, Joe. I've seen them play plenty of times. I look at them. I'm starting to really start watch more and more now now because free agency is kind of over now. So now we're on to the draft, right? I would be shocked, dude, shocked if these three kids that have did not have a long and distinguished career in this league. The Giants need one. They need that WR1 bad, Jerry. They haven't had it in a long, long time. This is the only reason why I would stay at six is like, yeah. you know what? <laughs> I'm not going back to 11 because I might not have a shot at one of these three. I'm not That's saying fair. you can't get a good receiver, Jerry, at 11. Yeah, I'm just saying those three studs, they might be gone. And I'm going to stay there because I'm going to bring in Malik Neighbors. Or I'm going to bring in Rome. Or who the hell knows? Maybe even Marvin. You know what I mean? Well, that's look, that's a good question here from Chal Cesar M- Mendez, right? Hey, guys, pick your favorite hypothetical draft scenario. One, the Giants are able to trade up to third and get May. Two, the Giants draft J.J. at six. Or three, five quarterbacks are taken in the top five and Marvin Harrison Jr. and the G-Men draft them. <laughs> if you're asking me, I'm, I, if I had that scenario, if Marvin Harrison's there, I, that's, the, that's the one I would be most happy with. Now, because I, I don't have a very strong opinion on Drake May and J.J. McCarthy, strong enough. It, it's like, I, I don't know what I'd be getting. I, again, I trust Shane and Dable to make that decision. But if you're asking me which, which scenario... That those there's five guys go and somehow Marvin Harrison's still there. And I know it's not just Chris Sims that had, I, well, he's the only one that had Marvin Harrison third on his list. But there's other folks that are having neighbors jump Harrison. And this is yeah. what I mean about like these stock prices going up and down. Like we're right. just okay. They haven't played in six months or whatever, three months, whatever. Um, and, and I know Marvin Harrison's not working out, whatever. But I don't know, man. Harrison's been one all year long. Um, that to me, that's if you got him at six. That'd be a miracle. I would take that in a second. <laughs> yeah, Matt. You never know, right, dude? Uh, yeah, who you knows? You never know with these drafts, man. You don't yeah. know. Yeah. You don't know. As far as they go with the Giants to take May or they take Jay, uh, guys, I, I, I don't know how they have these kids graded out. Right. I don't know. It, everything is speculation, you know, unless you know, you know, you're sitting there with Shane and Dable and everybody and say, okay, we got this kid graded here, here, here. Don't know. You know, so you you people could say, well, I like this kid better, and Sean, Shane should too. No, that's not the way it works. You know, yeah, so it'll be it'll be interesting, man. Um, Here's a question for you. Yeah, say, all right, Giants picking six. Say, say four quarterbacks are off the board, and Harrison's off the board. You got Neighbors and Adunze. I got two questions. One out of those two, which one do you want? Or and the other question is, if they took Bowers instead, would you be? Would you think that was a dumb pick? If the Giants took Bowers, yeah, instead would of I think one it's of those a dumb two, pick, instead no. of one of instead of one of those two receivers that are sitting there, right? Would I think it's a dumb pick? Uh, no. Would it surprise me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now out of now out of a Dunze and Neighbors, which one would you take? I think Rome and Dunze. Okay. But yeah. it, you can, to me, watching these kids, dude, coin you can't flip. Go wrong. What, Jerry? Coin flip. Yeah. You, you right. can't go wrong with either one. Right. You can't right. go wrong with either one. Right. You know, and Marvin Harris, I know he didn't do his, I know he didn't work out today in his pro day. And I found out a little weird. I did. I was like, what, 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 what's up? And then you, I think it was Albert Breer kind of explained it. 
You know, so I said, oh, okay. You know, it's not going to hurt his stock, <laughs> Jerry. No. The only thing that could hurt Marvin Harrison's stock is if something, some kind of red flag pops up out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. You got people agreeing what you want to do and say, Chris. Thigh yeah, guy, like, Brian, look, look, Michael look. Garcia. Yeah, and it's not like I'm right. It's just to me, it's, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, that's funny. <laughs> Tom says the Italian guy, of course, picks Rome. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think, you know what, Thomas? I, I didn't, didn't even either. think about that. That's great. That <laughs> is awesome. That's great. But uh, nice. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's not like I'm right. To me, you can't go wrong with either one, bro. Right. You, know, uh, so you, you can't go wrong with either one. So. Deborah Ellis, is Penix out, afraid of his injuries? No, I just, not at six. I mean, six is way too early. Pe Again, it's still not as bad as Daniel Jones for me. Like, if there's a Penix at six, I'd be like, ah, six, trade down and get him. Uh, but it wouldn't be walk home on a bridge in the rain bad. But, in uh, yeah, I just think that's, I. he seems to be that 12 to 13, which is why I said, if you traded down with the Vikings and you took Penix and you really liked him, then then do it, then make that kind of a move. Mm -hmm. Um Chris from 1925 Big Blue Wrecking Crew, keep doing you. So, Chris, how many Golden Domers are the G-Men select? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully the corner. Hopefully they go the cornerback, you know. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll see. There's a there's a lot of there's some lot of talent coming out from the from the Notre Dame side. Though. But Jerry, let me ask you this too, Jerry. Speaking of Golden Domers, right? Yeah. How, I guess now you look at the Giants after they go out and they sign uh uh, you know, Jermaine, yeah. yeah, Andrew Thomas, you know, all that stuff. Would it really surprise you now if they went tackle at six? Stun, I would stun me. Really? I would. I would be stunned if they took Joel. I mean, and again, not a bad pick. I wouldn't be upset about it by any means. Mm -hmm. But I would say, all right, well then, um, our free agent is either going to play guard or not play, or kept Evan Neal's all or going to be an afterthought to me. <laughs> You're right. And he's <laughs> never going to step back at right tackle ever again. He's going to be a guard now, if that. So, yeah, it would be like we've lost all faith in Evan Neal to even – probably to even be a guard if you just signed someone for two years and $14 million or whatever it was. Yeah. So I would be stunned. I wouldn't be mad, but it would be – that would be a surprise to me. I agree. He's, he's great, though. After what they did in free – a lot of times free agency dictates what they're going to do in the draft. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So after what they did here in free agency, Jerry, I'm with you, man. I, I mean, I would be surprised, too, if they went with a tackle at six. I, I would. If they didn't sign one, uh, I'd be like, well, that's going to be on the board. No question. That could be one of them. You know, that could be a pick. Uh, I just don't see it now. You know, I don't. And Bradley, you, you kind of, this is kind of what you're, this is, this was with the trade down too, right? Like Bradley says trade down. And if Waller retires, I want Bowers and McConkey from Georgia. I think Bowers at a, at 11, if they traded with the Vikings would be a good pick. I don't, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to be mad if they take him at six. I just would be surprised. Like you said, Chris. But um, I mean, Darren Waller has he decided yet? I it's a any day I, now. Yeah, uh, not, Jerry, not yet. We still don't know what the hell Darren Waller wants to do. Come on, I agree, dude. I mean, it's I enough mean, now. What are we doing? You know? Yeah. But, no, as of right now, yeah, uh, he has not made a decision, so we don't know what Darren Waller is doing yet. I guess he's going back with this, back and forth. So. <laughs> Robert Evans, your voice says never enough golden domers. He says damers, but he means. I agree. Damers. I agree with you there, Rob. Uh, Crunch Bunch. If Minnesota doesn't trade in front of us, would you still take a Dunes or your neighbors? Uh, yes. I, I, I think the Giants know they won't be in this position to draft a quarterback high. Yeah. Uh, again, but he may, they may not, like four guys may go, right? Like, like I, I okay, the, obviously the, 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 Cardinals and, and Chargers are not, but if another team trades up, it's a good point. It's a good question. So if there's a quarterback there, it depends on if they like him or not enough at six guys. I, I don't know. You, don't you know, know, they're very cloak and dagger with the giants, which is how we want it. We don't want it to be like the Eli Apple draft where, you know, they were kind of saying they, they want um, Leonard Floyd and if not him Conklin and got neither and then took Eli Apple. I don't want it. I don't want it to be that. I know what the giants are doing. We think receiver, but out of the quarterbacks, I don't know how they have those guys ranked. So I, we don't know. Yeah. Everything's speculation. We don't know. You know, so. Gre greetings from Austria. That's awesome, Phil. Oh, we, got Thank people you, man. From, we got people from all over the globe tonight. Antarctica. I saw somebody from British Columbia before, Austria. Antarctica was a shocker. Staten Island before. Oh, my God. Shocker. <laughs> Staten Island. <laughs> what is that, another country, Jerry? What do you, what do you mean? Yeah. What do you no, mean by so, that? Very close. The Outer Bridge <laughs> or the Gothels. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too. Enough with Wally uses money upgrade or upgrade any upgrade a number any number of positions, Robert. I mean, 
That's the thing. And I, I don't know how I admittedly, I don't know how it works. If he retires, if they get it's how much of his cap. contract back, it's a dead hit. It's, it's a, a dead, dead hit. So it's, it's a dead so cap hit. Not much. It's, but it's just like, if it's just like if we release him, then right. It's doable. So we, I think we get 6 million back but they'll get and like then 6 million back on the cap. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a little bit of a dead cap. It is. It's not, it's not like, cause the guy retires. Oh, that's it. You don't have to worry about that. No, 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 you, you do. You know? Um, well, I, I gotta be honest. I kind of made my feelings felt last week. It's like, all right, it's getting to the point now. Just release him. If he's going back and forth with this, this is ridiculous. You know, I agree. I completely agree. And especially like we said, dude, if you're talking about it, then you're already there. I mean, if you're talking openly about retirement, then you're there already. I mean, you know, come on, man. And it's unfair to the organization. It's unfair to the organization to do that to them. Especially like they traded for you. They gave up draft capital. And again, it was kind of the Kadarius Tony in a weird way to got the pick from Kansas City, traded for that. But come on, man. Washingtonville, New York. Good stuff. High School of Scott Pioli. Look at that. Nice. Nice. High school Scott Pioli, who's had um, a very good, very good career <laughs> in the uh, as a GM. But somebody said before, I saw it on one of the comments. I didn't highlight it. They said there's not there's not enough good receivers in round two. No, that's not true. That's a deep receiver class. You're not going to get the caliber. Again, like there's no saying that neighbors of Dunze and Harris are going to be studs. We think they will be, but our, stranger things have happened in careers. Right, like, um, how many times did the Detroit Lions take a wide receiver in the first round, and and really Calvin Johnson was the one that worked out, right? Um, Carlos Rogers, and I think the the original Mike Williams, oh, yeah. <laughs> but like I someone like him. yeah, good, right, good like someone, I forgot about him, someone like Keon Coleman, um, in round two from Florida yeah. State. I'm not gonna be upset with that pick. I'd be ecstatic. Too. Right, if we got JJ McCarthy at six, and then Keon Coleman in round two, oh my, I'd sign up for that now. Like, again, assuming that Dable and, and, and Shane love yeah. McCarthy, this is not a pick I'm going to be mad at. So if they got McCarthy and Coleman, I, I'd be ecstatic with that. Oh, my God. That's why I said if they take quarterback round one, I really think they're going to do everything they can to, to give him a bona fide what we think will be number one receiver in round two. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so Dan Dan Mann asked, Chris, being, fr being a UVA fan, I have to ask, do you like Malik Washington? I'm not too familiar with him. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Not too familiar with him. So there you go. Yeah, Keon. That's a that's a good point by Joey. Yeah. Um. He. I look, man. I. 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 Know, I remember when they played Notre Dame, and I was so impressed with Keon, man. I, I really like his game too. Yep. You know, I really like his game. This receivers, you know, then you got McConkie in that second round, a late for. You know, there's some really good receivers coming out. Yeah. You know, there's some really good receivers. You got like three dy dynamic ones, and then you got a bunch of good ones, man. You know, it's. Uh, it's going to be interesting, man. I tell you, it, it's going to be an interesting draft because the Giants need a quarterback and a receiver. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, they do. You know? Yep. And and, and a cornerback, and you know, and you know, so they they need, you know, they have uh, what, what do they have? Six picks, Jerry? Now, right? Six. It's six now. They lost the second was, round. Though, so. Yeah, yeah. They they traded that. Um, and the yeah. So it's right. six now. Um, well, seven obviously, but um. Yeah, and we need we you know look they did a good job in free agency filling needs if these guys work out but you still need a lot you need a a, a number one corn a, a number two corner I should say like you said your number one receiver you need a quarterback you know like there's there's big ones that you need and you know Singletary's a nice running back but you know he'll, he'll get the job done but yeah you could argue that if uh, somebody's there in round three they might go running who the hell knows if running back drops that they like maybe they go running back and in, in, in round three who I don't know what they're thinking and how they look at it. So, yeah. and Kevin McWalters is right. I mean, you know, Xavier Leggett is yeah there you at forty seven. Is whew, man, you know. No, yeah. I just you know, oh Luke McCaffrey, yeah, yeah, Lad, you know, McConkey, McCaffrey, yep, yep. yep. Another good one I like too. I like McCaffrey's brother, man. I yeah. like him too, man. This Keon, like we just said, Keon. I mean, there's a lot of talented receivers coming out, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a good. I mean, it's you know, you got a shot at that second round, Jerry. If, you know, if they get that yeah. guy in the first round, you know, right. As far yeah, as that exactly. guy, I mean, as a as a quarter as a quarterback, if they, you know. Yep. All right, guys, we're gonna take our second break. We're forty minutes in already. You're listening to the John Insider podcast. Hang on one second. And we're back, folks. Listen to the John Insider podcast with Jerry Foley and Chris. Nobody beats the biz, Biz Ignano. Uh, Crunch bunch. I'm, I remember hearing David was frustrated watching film with the DJ last podcast from what you've heard. Yes. Yes. That's, that's true. Correct. Yeah. There was time. There was times that they, you know, 
Davis was a little frustrated. Felt Daniel left some left some plays on the field. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Collins asks, any word on Adore Jackson? Could they bring him back as what then hell? Uh, as what the hell? We brought back Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't heard anything about Adore. Um, Adore doesn't play special teams, so I don't expect Adore back. I really don't. He doesn't seem to be getting. I think yeah. maybe I think one team brought him in for a visit. I, I'm not even sure. I think one team might have brought him in, but he's not getting a lot of attention on the free agent market. I mean, he'll wind up with somewhere, but John P says Shane's drafts have been spotty so far. Take the sure bet wide receiver. Well, nothing's a Very sure bet, but I, I get your point, John. It's it's a good point. Um, it's been okay. Like uh, I guess if you had to grade both drafts right now, uh, for as high as they picked. B minus C plus. I'm and I'm I'm grading a little. Um, you know, I'm I'm being generous with the B minus. I think, but look, also they're young guys. You got to see how they play year. You know, that that first draft. You want to see how they play year three. You want to see what Thibodeau can do opposite of Burns, right? Can he become a a Brian Burns, right? Uh, can Neil finally look like he can play with a with a new um, offensive line coach? And I keep telling you, dude, Wandale Robinson. If you get a one out there, Wandale Robinson is going to be incredible for this team. So there are some things that to be excited about. And then last year's draft, Tay Banks. So, yeah, we get it, though. We, we need impact. And Chris has been talking about it since, I don't know, Chris, December, maybe. So <laughs> Yeah. Give well, I was take. really getting frustrated. So, yeah, look, Robert Evans asked at what point, you know, can we start grading? Well, you, we always give it three years. Yeah. Yep. You know, you give a draft three years. Yeah. Look, Evan Neal turns around and plays out a real solid year. That's, okay, that's a big plus for Joe. Thibodeau turns into even you know a real dominant edge guy, you know, whatever, 13 sacks. Solid, you know, and that those are solid, those are solid drafts. Right? Yeah. So you can give it three years. Always like to give it three years. Nolan oh. David McGarra asks if Daniel Jones with this year's draft, what round do you think he'll get picked? <laughs> with all these court without with all these quarterbacks? Mm. Third or fourth. Yeah, That's I me. Agree. Probably the third or fourth. I mean, because at that point, you're taking a flyer. If you wanted a guy, you'd get one of the six or seven. I think he'd be looked at like Spencer Rattler to me. That's where I think he would kind of – that, that, that's his comparable. Yeah, um, possible. But, but who the hell knows, man? Like we said, dude. Hey, hey look. Hey, things have happened. Look, Jerry, you know, if it's Daniel – well, it's going to be Daniel in September anyway. If he's – you know, if the knee's good. And like I said the last podcast, you know, it's not like they – they was disgusted by the sight of Daniel Jones. No, they still think Daniel right. Jones is a talented kid. Trust me, what I'm telling you. They still think Daniel is a talented kid. Yeah. Um, and if it's him, uh, guess what? They, they hoping the offensive line is in a proven form. They hoping they're going to get that number one receiver because he's never had a, number, a true number one receiver. Right. And he's also has never had a true offensive line. Not you know people could argue that all he wants. Oh, well, right. Doesn't matter. He stinks. That's right. But it's it is facts. Yes. Yep. It is the fact. Facts. Yeah. So yeah. if it's him. Which it should be is, you know, well, they're hoping the offensive line's approved. They're hoping they got a number one for this, for this guy now. Team was for Slayton and Wandale and all that stuff. And then Jalen, right? And then it's Dable's job and Mike Kafka's job to kind of get that 2022 Daniel back where he was very efficient, right? Yeah. And the second, especially the second half of the year and the playoff game and all that. And I know he got his ass kicked against the Eagles and all that stuff. I get it. But, you know, I know people don't want to admit this on Twitter, but if you read Twitter these days, X, whatever the hell it is now, but a lot of people were in love with Daniel Jones after the 2022 season. Right. Remember? That's our, that's my guy. That's my quarterback. Daniel's this. Daniel's that. And now everybody hates his guts. You know, and now it's like I see stuff that's like I, I just shake my head like, are you kidding me? You know? Yeah, I got to call you out. It's it's boss time, 1092. I hear come the Jones excuses. Not excuses when excuses. they're real. Oh, it's facts. Dude, and, and look, we want, let me let me be very, very clear. I want to upgrade the quarterback position on the New York football giants. I just don't know which one. I'm trusting my GM to do that for me, okay? We're not picking first or second. Otherwise, it's easy. It's, it's Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels. I, I don't know. The, I'm not going to tell you if I want Drake May or McCarthy because I don't know, right? I want them to upgrade. No one's making excuses for Jones. These are facts. The offensive line has been terrible. He's never had a one receiver. His latest weapon at tight end wants to retire now. So, <laughs> okay. I, I mean, you know, every reason. Okay, I get it. We we do not like... And I, 
I want to upgrade quarterback. It's not. Yeah, I know it's year six. I know. I know. Thank you. I know. I walk. I'm the one who walked on the bridge at the draft. I never wanted him. Okay, but he's our quarterback. And after 2022, he played well enough to deserve another contract. 40 million. That's what. That's what the going rate was, guys. And it's a two-year deal. We can get out of it this one. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, people. It's not excuses. It's facts. Right. You know, and I'm not saying Daniel couldn't have played better, you know, last year and stuff. I'm just telling you, it's still a fact that he, he hasn't had an offensive line or a number one receiver. And if, you know, when if they don't draft a quarterback, he's their guy next year and all that stuff. Right. Even if they draft one, he's going to be going into the season as their guy, right? Yeah. And you're going to have to make him better. He's going to have to get better. No question about it. And they're hoping the offensive line improvement and uh, having that real number one on the outside – makes him get better that's all i'm saying i'm not saying he's going to be patrick mahomes i'm not excuses these are facts okay now the same offensive line last year was it all the offensive lines fault with daniel he didn't play as well no i'm not saying that either daniel did not play well last year i've said it three thousand times right he did not play well last year in the six games that he played there was a lot of things that he did not do well Hopefully, if he's your guy in 2024, right, and he's going to be the guy going into camp and all that stuff, even if they draft a Malik, uh, Malik names, listen, to me, even if they draft a Jaden Daniels, the chances are it's going to be Daniel, right, going yeah. into camp and all that stuff. You have to try to get him better. You got to hope he plays better. And hopefully the pieces around him make him play better. That's all I'm saying. So my, my question for you, when, when they signed um, Drew Locke, you're like, does this mean anything in the draft? No. But my question, I got two parts. One, if they go quarterback in round one or two, uh, Tommy DeVito is gone, right? That's it. It's been a good story. I, I but, would imagine. Okay. Yeah. The other part is, do you carry three quarterbacks all year long? What, do you carry three on, quarterbacks? On the, on the roster. I mean, is does Drew Lock? Uh, Drew Lock's not going to go to the practice oh, squad. No, you know, one's going to be, you know, inactive. You know? Right. But you're going to have three. Uh, you're going to have, so there's no. Oh, practice squad. Yeah. No, I no I'm, I'm saying he's not going to be on the practice squad. So you're just going to have three on the roster all year, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. You're going to have. You're going to have. If they draft a quarterback, you're going to have Daniel, yeah. Drew Lock, and a new kid. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yep. Um. Okay. Should give Jones a wide receiver. He can stare down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. No, he does stare, tend to stare him down. Ask uh, Witherspoon, the rookie corner on Seattle, who called him out like on it. Like I said, he did a lot of – he did not play well last year in the six games that he played. No question about it. You know, sorry. Uh, let's see. Dan, man, we're never in that right spot. I mean, it took, as Deion Sanders put it, the Mannings gangstering the NFL. <laughs> Come on. To get Eli. Well, I guess he forced his way out. Um, you know, we weren't in the right spot to take Chase Young either. And that worked, right? We got Andrew Thomas. So I understand mm -hmm. that, Dan, but sometimes things happen. And I know we're picking six. And we, everybody's saying, oh, the, the worst two wins were the Patriots and Washington this year. Okay. But, you know, uh, it is what it is. You, you can't, you got to play to win. But I understand, I understand the point. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Well, but, <laughs> New York football guys have never had a number one black quarterback, the only franchise left. Well, I got news for you, buddy. I think if Jaden Daniels is there for the Giants, that's going to change. <laughs> going to break that, absolutely. Yeah, you know? good point. Yep. Um, MetLife will be empty. Okay, sorry. I wanted to go to Kevin McWalters before. How ugly – so, Kevin McWalters, how ugly will MetLife get if they don't draft a quarterback? Scary to think. Um, oh, you mean the draft party? Yeah, I, I think they'd be disappointed. Sure, absolutely, because then, then it's Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, and Tommy DeVito, and I, uh, how, how – that's the other thing. Like, how how soon are you going to be up picking top six again? Like, if it's next year, it's just going to be oh my god, another year of this. That means you didn't do well in twenty twenty four. So somehow, some way, a quarterback's going to come on this roster. I just don't know if it's going to be pick six or second round trade up to the first. I have no idea, but I think one way or another, um, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So they'll try. Uh, Bradley, Chris, will Dave will be calling the plays this year? I don't know. It's way too early for that stuff. Um, if I had a guess right now, I I got to be honest with you, I thought he would. I like mm -hmm. him to go. I kind of changed my opinion on that. If I had a guess right now, I would say, no, Kafka's calling him again next year. 
Do we need tickets for the draft party? I usually you do, but I think you can just get them online. I don't know if they cost. I don't think they cost anything. I think you got to sign up for them. Um, yeah, they usually be, that should be coming out soon. Yeah, they announced that. Yeah. Uh, Crunch Bunch, what's your opinion on the Burns trade? My heart says I love the trade because he's young and still ascending. Objectively, he got overpaid. League That's second highest. Happens, yeah, yeah, that always happens though. So did Daniel yeah. Jones got overpaid. <laughs> so I mean. Yeah. Because he's the next in line. He, the next, the next Ed Rusher will get more, right? So that's just kind of <laughs> how it works, right? right. And look, I, you know, I, I wrote, <laughs> I wrote an article, a column this week about uh, Brian Burns, you know, and I just want to just keep something in mind for everybody, you know. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, he got overpaid this and that, but you know, his sack numbers and it, but you got to remember something. He played in Carolina, and they won't in front a lot, okay. They didn't. They didn't do a lot of winning in Carolina, so I'm not saying they're gonna, the Giants are going to do win 11 games next year. Where he's going to have this opportunity. I'm just saying, as far as sack numbers and people look at, it, go, he only had seven and a half last year, you know, 11. But he also didn't play a lot with the lead in the fourth quarter, and that's where a lot of guys get sacks, right? Right. Right. You pin your ears back, and boom, here I go. I can give yeah. a shit less about the run because right. we're up 10 points in the fourth quarter, and I don't give a crap if they run the ball. You know what I mean? Just keep that in mind. You know, yeah. he's a very talented edge kid. You know, um, hopefully the Giants, you know, are looking at a lot of leads to put his kid down the road in the next few years where he could do his thing. But he's, he's a talented guy, Brian. I remember him in Florida State. He's a talented guy. As far as the money, who gives a shit? Sorry. It's not mine. It's not mine. You, am I second highest? Okay. Like Jerry just said, a year from now, he might be the sixth highest. Okay. And, and it's not my money. It's not your money. I get it. But come on. Like, I'm not a capologist. I, whatever. It's going to be it's, the next guy's the next guy. Um, but also, Chris, Burns, now that uh, Aaron Donald has retired, Burns is playing with arguably the best defensive tackle in football, best in, one of the best interior linemen in football, too. Jerry, nobody's arguing that, brother. Right. And nobody's got, arguing that. And you got a, a, a guy with you a lot Chris, of potential. You got, you know, he's, you got those Chris Joneses, you got the Dexter Lawrences of the league, you know, yep. guys like that, brother. Uh, Justin Budubike uh, there from Baltimore. Dexter's right there with them, brother. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And like he yep. said, Brian, at his presser, you know, he was introduced to us in the media uh, after the trade. You know, he said, yo, I got some dogs on this defensive line, man. I got yep. dogs next to me and I got a dog back at linebacker, you know. Yep. Uh, no question, Jerry. Very good point by you. You know, he's playing alongside a guy that's an absolute animal. Yeah. Animal. Yep. As yeah. A, up front in Dexter Lawrence is one of the best in the game. Yep. Is, is there any question about that? And call me crazy, but I do think there's going to be some competitive fire between Burns and Thibodeau. I'm just calling it now, okay? I can see it. I could see Burns lighting a fire under Thibodeau a little bit on the other edge. Uh, I just I think it's going to happen. I think Thibodeau, look, we all know that Thibodeau had a pretty good year, but a lot of times he disappeared. He's the kind of the Chris Kreider of the Giants on defense. Um, you know, too many games where he, he does some things, and in other games he just disappears. So I do think that Burns will light a fire under him a bit. Uh, it's just natural. And look, man, uh, you know, Ojalari, if he could stay healthy, I know it's the biggest if, but he's, he's, he's a nice fourth. Dude, I, I was just going to say that. I mean, I know people are going to go, Chris, Jerry, are you out of your mind? Yeah. But hey, here's the facts. If the second best pass rusher on the team, yeah. now he is the second best pass rusher on the team. Right. Right. Now that they got Burns. If he can mm -hmm. stay healthy. Sorry, I know uh, he's never healthy. Uh, I get it. He's he's been hurt. I get it. I know that. But if the kick is stay healthy, he's a real good pass rusher. And that's his ease. Yeah, that's his ease. You know, I know he's had issues with that, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be healthy next year. You right. Know? So, um, you know, uh, hey Jerry, I got to be honest with you. You know, even if you get fourteen games at his ease, thirteen oh. games. Where I mean, do I, just, where do, where I, do mean, I sign? Where do I sign? Uh, you, you get what I'm saying? Yes. You know, that would be unbelievable, right? Yep. <laughs> if you could get yeah. that disease. Yeah. Um, hey, look, you know, the Jets just signed a left tackle that hasn't had a full season since 2015, but he's played 13 games, 12 games. You know, and, and you see Jeff fans, well, we get 13 games out of him, we're happy. Oh, yeah, I get it. Like, if we get 13 games out of disease, oh hey, God. I'll take I'll take that right now. Yeah. I'll take that. I don't want to get four games out of disease. Yep. I want, but if you get double digits, I understand, you know, look, your goal should be 17, of course. I'm just saying, if you could get 13 games, 14 games out of Aziz, Jerry, all over the opposite of Brian, Tibbs, Dex, right? Yep. How's that looking, bro? Great. And like you said, if you get four games out of Aziz, that means he's probably 
coming off of an injury, so he's still nursing. He's half of what he should be. Like, it's just a useless four games. I just shut him down for the season then. Like, when he comes back, it's like, oh, he's nursing whatever he had hurt. So, look, I always look at it like when they said Aziz put on weight, I thought, mm, that's always tough for guys, especially when they're when they're speed rushers because you just have, start having soft tissue injuries. And it's like two years removed from that. I just want – hopefully this year – he can be healthy. And like you said, dude, if we get 14 games out of him, that probably means nine to 10 sacks, hopefully. And I would sign up for that right now. And I wouldn't trade him yet, Joe Shane Train. I still want to see what he can do. Like, I am yeah. I remember the, the rookie trade. year. Right, no, no. And what are you going to get? What are you going to get for him? A bag of footballs? Like, who's going to give you anything for him? Hey, look, We're the ones that say his potential. There's two things, Jerry. One, if he's healthy, he's really good. Two, this is his contract year. He. You'd be surprised all of a sudden. Hell, no, <laughs> just, no, hey, there it is. Side guy Bry said it. Playing for go. a new contract. There you go. Right. And, oh, and, and it's a I great point. Nolan, David, Nolan, David McGarry said, when you identify your quarterback, you do not hesitate. Right. Uh, yes. And they won't. Just scroll up a little bit, Jerry. A little oh, back. there it is. I, I, I saw it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You there know, uh, well, then I, <clears> yeah. you know, I think quarterback is in the discussion, right? They're not. Yes. So absolutely. If identify a guy. That's there at six. They're, they're probably going to take him. Rob Cosis, big Bolts fan. Do you think they address oh. Edge in the draft too? How deep is Edge? Is that, um, is, that, is that the team that just kicked the Rangers' ass? Yeah, 7 4 or whatever it was. Not 7. Was it 7 4? 5 2? It was three, a three, 6 3. Yeah. 6 3. Yeah, I was close. Okay, yeah. I couldn't think. Come on. Yeah. I just, I just like that flow. I dude, they've been the Rangers are very predictable though. I I said they're gonna lose to the to, they just beat Carolina one nothing. I said they're not winning against the Lightning and they're gonna beat the crap out of the Penguins and the, and the Islanders and then probably lose to the Jets. So I'll tell you what, dude, I have nailed the so Rangers. Even, if, even the Devils beat the crap out of the Penguins. So right, know. if I was a betting man on the Rangers, I'd be cleaning up this year. They're very. I know going, who they're get beating. That app going, bro. You can make make yourself some money. But you look. Do you think they go edge in the draft as well? It would have to be like a guy that's there that fell to them. I think. Again, I don't. I would guess that like we cannot, we can't resist taking this guy. Let's let's take him. That's yeah, I, I think. don't think they do now. You know, not no. I mean, like I'm saying in like round three. Yeah, no. We, I'm talking about the first. I think he's talking about. I'm sure he's talking about early, right? I don't think he's talking about the whole. If the whole draft, oh no. I, he's I, saying I, in the draft, like Jerry the draft. said. You know, if they identify somebody in the middle rounds, you know, and that's that like, they can't believe he's there. Yeah, yeah. I can see him doing that. No question. You could never have enough edge guys, bro. Okay, uh, I'm thinking early, like six round. I don't think that's you know six round or second. Round. I don't think that now with the acquisition of Burns, I don't see that. No. I'll ask. I'll answer one hockey question. Joe Shane Trainer, the Rangers, a deep playoff run team, aka contenders, likely to win a cup. I think their I think their ceiling is the conference finals. I I love watching them. I, I just I don't see how they're. I, if they have to play Tampa in round one, that's going to take a lot out of them, and they're going to have to eventually beat Florida probably or the Bruins. I think their ceiling is the conference finals, but we'll we'll get it to that another day. Um, sad Giants fans saw earlier someone comparing the Saquon signing to the Namdi Asamoah signing of the Eleven Dream Team. No, I think Saquon's got ball left. I think he'll do well behind that offensive line. It's I don't think it's Namdi Asamoah. I don't begin. And and look, the Eagles are not putting together a dream team. They have warts now. Okay, they have guys retiring. Oh, Fletcher Cox, have a good life, buddy. Like you and Kelsey, long live a long life. Just not on not on on the field against us. That's it. Um, so happy to see him retire. The the Eagles have holes now, and they even lost a reserve right tackle this week that they were upset about. So uh, it, it's a whole different scenario. Saquon's got a lot of ball left, guys. So, mm. uh, Dan Man. After getting Runyon Jr., would it be something to get Trotter Jr. as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's it. I, think he's... I, I like Trotter Jr., man. Yeah, yeah. I like him. Yeah. You'd have to think Philly would be looking at him, but who knows, man? I'd love to get him. Kidding me? Oh, my God. I like Trotter Jr. Yep. That'd be he nice. reminds me of his dad, man. Wow. He, I remember watching him last year in college. I was like, wow, he reminds me of his dad. Holy yes. crap. Yeah. yeah so. This is a good point. Again, Joe Shane Tran, JJ McCarthy is like two to three years younger he than is. the He's other only quarterbacks. 20, right? 21 tops, whatever it is. So I see the Giants drafting him, block the Vikings for trading up. I don't know how they, yeah, they'd, they'd have, if, if they felt, if they felt like right now, I think the Vikings have 11 and 23 or 11 and 24. If Shane wanted McCarthy and he felt like the Vikings were going to do that, then Shane's got to trade up with Arizona. Or again, maybe the Patriots take him. You have to, I don't know what the Patriots are going to do. I think they're going to take JJ McCarthy, but could be wrong. 
but he'd have to, he's going to have to trade up because the Vikings, I would think, Chris, are clearly looking to make a move. No? Oh, for, to, to I mean, come on. Quarterback. Yeah. They are clearly looking to make a move. Yeah. Watch out for them. Yep. Um, yeah, 11 and 23. I don't think they think their future is uh, Sam Donald. That's well, 11 that's and 23. What's that? Well, dude? that's what uh, they're picking 11 and 23. The Vikings, well, the Vikings are. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't see. Yeah. People don't see the Pats getting a quarterback. I don't see how they can't. I mean, who do you go with a quarterback? Jacoby Brissett? I mean, I. They draft a quarterback, man. What? They'd be out of their mind. Huh? If they don't, you know what, dude? If Joe Chain Train, if they don't, they're crazy for not yeah. doing it. I think they're out of their minds picking three and not taking a quarterback. I, I nuts. They just traded Mac Jones. Zach yeah. Bradley is not the future. He got caught. And Jacoby Brissett, they brought in, but he's not the future. I mean, obviously, they got to take a quarterback. It'd be insane if they don't. Um, unless, unless, unless their staff. Let, oh yeah, that'll bring them to the cup. <laughs> unless this, unless their staff, unless their staff doesn't like anybody after Caleb, I don't know. Sad Giants fan, what are your 2024 bold predictions? Doesn't have to be Giants related. What? What are your 2024 bold predictions? Doesn't have to be Giants related. I'll give you one. I have no idea. Yeah. I'll give you. Eagles. Eagles are going to go eight and nine, and Nick Sirianni is going to get fired. How about that? That's a mm. bold prediction. Eight and nine, losing record. I'm saying it. Watch them go like sixteen and one, Chris. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I, it's a disaster waiting to happen with that coaching staff. I'm telling you, yes, yeah, it's possible. I also, uh, I also, he, I also uh, kind of like what they what they did in free agency too. So I wouldn't count them out yet. But the right. Sirianian, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see, man. We'll see. Thanks, Pete, with the donation. Do you believe six and forty-seven are better than eleven and twenty-three? So, Chris, would you rather have six and forty-seven or the eleventh yeah, and twenty-third? I'm sorry, yeah, uh, only because, like I said earlier in the podcast, I want that if the you know if the quarterback, I want that stud receiver, dude. All right, I want that. I want Rome, or I want Malik Neighbors, or Marvin, and or Malik, whoever the hell's there at six. I'm sorry, this is the opportunity, Jerry to get a dominant receiver. And everybody is saying these three kids are just going to be phenomenal. You know, everybody's saying it. In, and I just look at them, and I've seen them, and I look at them, and I say, man, how the hell, these kids here, they're just like, to me, nothing's a can't miss. I get it, Jerry. You know, we've right. seen this before, sure. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it. But I just look at them like, man, we can't pass up one of these kids if they don't get that guy, you know? So, uh, that's why I'll, that's the only reason why I say uh, I'm staying at six, man. I want that guy on the outside. But if they, so Jordan Glasser, Glasser is with you, a uh, stud wide receiver over an unsure quarterback is a no brainer. But if they go quarterback, Chris, um, are you mad? Or are you like, no, okay, no, no, no. That means I identified it, uh, right. a kid as they feel is that this is yeah. their franchise guy. I'm not going to be mad. Yeah. Jerry. I'm just saying that. Right. If you don't get there, like it, when it comes to six and a yeah. JJ's there, yeah, Penix, you know, whatever it might be. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, and sure. they don't take him, which means they don't have him graded that high. They don't they didn't have him graded like as a sixth overall. Mm -hmm. Boom, wide receiver, you know? Yeah. Yep. Then I'll be then take the receiver. Got it. All right. Dude, we're over. We don't, know how these guys, we don't know how shown we don't know how to have these kids graded, man. We'll find out April. Yeah, Shane, where you been? Hey guys, late to the party. It's been a while. Yeah, what the hell? Uh, El Scorcho. I don't mind Penix, but I doubt he makes a pass 13. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I just see him in that 11 to 13 range where he's going to get taken. Uh, take him at six. Again, I wouldn't. If the Giants did, I would be stunned, with, it, especially with his injury history. And it, you know, it means that we have a lot of faith in our new right tackle. Ah, uh, oh, Barb, finally out of the hospital. Happy to be here. Missed your insight. Good stuff, Barb. Glad you're out of the hospital. Oh, she's in a, she was in a hospital? Apparently, I haven't seen oh, her on oh, X oh. very much, so just oh. figured I'd highlight well, Bob, the. Uh, I didn't comment. know you were in the hospital, and I'm glad you're out of the hospital. So yep. I hope you're doing well. Yep, good stuff. All right, dude, we're over an hour already. These things fly by, guys. Um, thank you for the comments. Thank you for the questions. I mean, look, even if we disagree, it's all in good fun. Um, really, you're 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 making this really enjoyable. These live streams. 
at first we were kind of, I wasn't I was a little apprehensive. I'm like, I don't know what the hell to expect, but uh, everybody's joining at a thousand thirty three watching right now. Wow, um, just a thousand watching. Yeah. Oof, yep. Thank you. Oh, for two months, Barb. Jeez, man. My for God. Two months. Glad you're back. Holy cow. Bob, D- DM us. DM yeah, us. And please, please. Let us know what the hell happened. Thanks for keeping me company when I work on servers, Bill. Absolutely, man. And that's what I mean. Like, it's good stuff. Everybody chiming in. And guys, the only, only thing we ask is just hit the likes on YouTube, please. Hit the thumbs up. That's all we ask. And, and if you haven't, just hit subscribe. It's free. There's no subscription payment or fee or anything. Just hit subscribe. That, that would help. That'd be good stuff. Um, anything else, dude? Any comments you see you want me to highlight or anything else? No, we'll try to come. We'll, we'll try to dig up a guest for next week. Yeah, maybe we'll start going really in depth into the. Well, we got like a month. Well, next week is the end of March. We're gonna have if someone asked about Cyberson or Saratella. Might maybe we'll have one of them all next week. We'll 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 figure it out. Yeah, Bart. we'll try to have somebody else on. We'll try to get some. We'll talk more about this. Uh, talk more about the. Uh, do you have coming up and what's going on, man? Yeah, you know, so it's uh, it's going to be a real interesting month. Yeah, you know? it's going to be a lot I, of fun. I, like that guy just said, you think the Patriots will open up? I mean, why? You know, to me, it's do, are they, they open if, to it? If yeah, they do, sure. if they do, thank you. If they do, thank you, Patriots. Yeah, I think they are open to it. Yeah, but I think they'd be out of their minds. I mean, they, I mean, unless they don't have these kids graded out well, except maybe one, Caleb. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they have him and Jaden, and then Washington goes Jaden, and that's it. And they don't have these other kids graded out first round. I don't know. We'll find out. Rob says no chance. Even Crunch Bunch answers his own question. <laughs> I don't think they will. <laughs> so, ah, good stuff. All right, guys. We'll probably come back. We'll, we'll let you know what day. It's probably Wednesday, but uh, tentative, and we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, but again, like Chris said, maybe we'll have a guest too. But thank you guys for joining. Great time as always. Um, anything else, Chris? No, thanks. Thanks, every, hey Jerry. Thanks for everybody watching. Right, man. A thousand, yeah. over a thousand people. A lot of people watching. Thanks yep. for the questions. Yeah. Keep them coming. You know. Uh, thanks for the support, man, and all that stuff, and um, and all that stuff, and uh, thank you for everybody. And uh, Bob, I'm glad you're out of the hospital. I didn't even know she was in the hospital. Uh, you know, she's know. a great, she's a great woman, man. I hate to yep. hear that, but I'm glad yep. she's home. You know, I don't know what the hell, but she'll DM us, I'm sure. So. Uh, thank you, everybody. Chris, can we get a what? A let's, let's go, go Rangers. Rangers. That's Jerry's department. That's not me. That's not <laughs> not me. from Chris, guys. Not from Chris. No. Nah. Let's go yeah. Rempy, though. He's a good player. He's smart. <laughs> good skater. So, uh, he looks clumsy, huh? Moron. So, uh, a meat bag. Thinks he's tough. It break. So, anyway. So, no, you're not going to get a let's go Rangers out of me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but. I could tell you this, and Jerry knows. Jerry knows me a long time now. You know, I do admire the Rangers in a lot of ways, and I, yeah. I text Jerry the other day about you know, talk a little, finish up a little hockey. I, I to me, watching the Rangers is unbelievable. How they attack in the offensive zone, and you make one mistake, it's like bang, bang, goal. It's, yeah. it's, it's. Yep. You saw Lafreniere the other day. One turnover, boom, up, uh, puts it up in the upper corner. And just the talent, their skill guys are just so friggin' talented. It's and the way they pass and the way they could be outshot 13 to one, but you make one mistake and it's bam, they score. Yeah. It's it's amazing to me. And you always talk about coaching, coaching, coaching. Talented, talented right. Team. I mean, Laviolette has gotten so much out of Lafreniere. Oh my god. I mean, that was a guy that they were talking about, like just letting it expire. And it was almost like Evan Neal, not as bad, but like it was literally like, all right, we don't know what this guy is, he's nothing. And now this year, oh, my God, we're talking about taking the next step up. And for you Ranger fans out there, I'll give you a little inside information. If I haven't mentioned this, I told Jerry about this. But if you haven't if yeah, I haven't mentioned what's this, up, buddy? What's going on? Uh, LFA, what's up, brother? Uh, for you, I'll give you a little inside information on the Rangers. Um, yep. Lafayette, for you Ranger fans, Lafayette was in a total doghouse with um, Gallant. Uh, with Gallant. Gallant did not like him. Did not like him. Didn't want to play him. For some reason, he just thought he was a dog. Uh, I know that for a fact. Chris a was the ra- fact. at the end of last season. Chris was a Rangers insider. <laughs> I, yes, uh, that is a fact. Yep. And and he needed that change. Of coat, and you see the way he's playing much better. So. Yep. So see everybody next week. Try to come up with a guess. If not, we'll wrap draft future all that stuff. Um, and a really interesting month coming up. Thanks, Hefe. Appreciate that, buddy. Yes. All right, guys. Sundays are giant days, baby. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.